Hey guys, it's Dane from Scoggin Dickey Part Center. I'm here with Brian Blakemore from Tequachi Motorsports and behind us is this giant Dodge Ram that y'all might remember from a video about a year ago. Uh, we had it on the dyno that's behind us. Uh, went through and got some baseline pulls on the original engine that was in there before Bryant went through a lot of work to put in a 6.4 liter uh, crate motor from us. And well, I guess I'll let you take it away as far as you know what you've been up to this past year sure. as far as getting this thing up to speed and uh, getting prepared for the Mint 400. Sure, sure. So to recap, the truck came in with a 5.7 liter Hemi and a 545 RFE transmission. That's what, this is a 2003, 2004, 2500, and that's the stock drivetrain that you would have found in the truck when it was new. Uh, it was down on power. It wasn't getting it all the way to the ground. When we dynoed it about a year ago, almost exactly a year ago now, it made about 145 horsepower and it was not very drivable off-road. I had just come back from the Mint 400 uh, in December of 21 where I made a lap and a third, and I was pretty disappointed with the performance of the truck. We met with Scog and Dickey, uh, Chance, who's hiding over there, and we discussed what options we might have to promote some of the things they're doing with, with their Mopar side of things, and how we may be able to uh, make this big girl dance a little better. Uh, what we came up with was putting a 6.4 liter crate motor in it with the standalone engine harness and computer setup all from Mopar. And then I also wanted to change the transmission, so I put an 8 HP 70 in it, which is a factory Mopar trans and a wide variety of vehicles, eight speed automatic. And that's got a standalone uh, harness and computer setup in it as well. So we changed everything in the drivetrain. We also re-geared it from 411s to 488s and we went up to a 40 inch tire. We also put a spool in the back to try to help. Doing all that work and getting everything ready to prep it for the for the next Mint 400, which is what I wanted to try again. It took me a year of, of solid labor, uh, trying to get this thing all back together and a little bit of trial and error. For the most part, everything slid into place as far as the chassis was concerned. But there were differences in drive shaft lengths because I changed rear axles and changed transmissions and transmission mounts, things like that all had to be changed. The motor and everything dropped right in. Uh, and once we got it all in and got it all wired up and everything, it fired and ran right off the bat and, awesome. and drove around the block, no problem. Uh, so we hit the Mint 400 in March of this year. Um, the goal was to add about two mile an hour faster to our overall lap speed. I wanted to see 100 miles an hour across the dirt and then about a 200 to 250 horsepower increase is what we were trying to make at the wheels. By the time I got the truck ready, I didn't have any time to put miles on it. Uh, it was a brand new motor, a brand new trans, brand new gears, and they all needed to be broke in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a couple weeks before we left, I decided, you know what? We'll just register the truck and we'll drive it to Vegas. So we drove it yeah. from Lubbock, Texas, all the way to Las Vegas. It was 935 miles. It performed flawlessly. It cruised down the interstate at or maybe slightly above street legal speeds. And, uh, and it, it performed great. It was, it was awesome. Uh, it was fun to drive. It shifted through all eight gears. It did everything it was supposed to. It had gobs of power compared to what it had before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was one of the highlights of the trip. We had people come up to us throughout the entire event saying, man, we've been following you on Instagram. You drove this thing all day from Texas? Oh yeah, we sure did. Yeah. And uh, you know, so by the time we got to Vegas, we had our break-in miles, we changed the oil in it, and, and we're ready to go racing. Now, I did you it. have a windscreen? I did. Okay. We put a, we put a plexiglass windshield in it. Uh, thankfully, without that, it would have been a miserable ride. Right. Uh, but with it, it was it was great. It was super pleasant. It was better than driving a normal vehicle with the windows down. There was no buffeting inside, you know, because there's no back glass, so everything right. just flowed through. It was really comfortable. Uh, it soaks up I-40, you know, with big shocks. It yeah. soaks it up real well, and uh, and it got, you know, I mean, it it just cruised. It cruised. I don't have cruise control, so my legs a little tired, <laughs> but it cruised at 70, 80 miles an hour, no problem. That's awesome. No problem. Yeah, awesome. yeah, I was pretty happy about that. So we got to Vegas. Uh, everybody loved the truck. They knew what we were doing. Um, 
Then it came to be race race day. We had everything prepped, ready to go, started racing. The first lap, we took our time to feel out the truck and to uh, feel out the course and everything. So our first lap was kind of slow. We pulled into every pit and monitored everything on the truck. Um, so how long is one lap? It's about 97 miles, okay. roughly, right. about almost 100 miles okay. for one lap. The first go round, it took us four and a half hours to do the first lap, but that's with a lot of stops. Mm -hmm. uh, we stopped in uh, one remote pit just to get eyeballs on everything on the truck. You know, does it? Is there anything hanging out? Are there any fluids puking out of it? How's it look? Uh, all good. Kept going got to our next pit there was a fire happening in the cab oh wow uh, one of my fan switches had melted down uh, I've been having trouble with that in the past too so I'm gonna probably gonna wire all of my fan in, in, independently and reduce some of the load on those circuits I'm also gonna upgrade to a brushless fan to reduce the amp load okay. on everything I think I think that'll help with that uh, once we got that contained and figured out what what it was and just basically cut the power to those two fans uh, we continued. The truck's got an oversized radiator out of a Cummins, so it, it has plenty of cooling without all four fans working. Um, then we made it through into the main pit. The steering was all loose, and I could feel it walking uh, walking across the dirt. Uh, so we had to tighten all the steering back up, um, put fuel in it. We put about 27 gallons in it to do that 100 miles. And then we went and crossed the, the start finish line and started our second lap. Made it through the first pit, no problem, no reason to stop, just cruised on through. Second pit, same thing, no problem, no reason to stop, just cruised on through that. And then we put about another 30 miles on it after that. And uh, that's when we started running into real problems. By that time, the trophy trucks had been through the course uh, probably two or three, some of them on their last lap and the terrain was just destroyed. Uh, it, was, it was very, very rough. All of the whoops that we were going through had been squared off, and so the truck was just hitting them yeah. and throwing the front end up in the air, no matter how slow we went. Um, on that lap, we did see 94.3 across the dry lake bed. I wasn't pushing the truck to its maximum. I wanted to save that for the last lap. Uh, just in case, but we did see we just just under 100. I don't have any doubts that it'll do 100 across the dirt. Uh, so that goal, we can count that as just about met. Um, it felt faster in all of the spots where we could be faster. The average speed seemed to pick up substantially. So I think I think we would have met that goal as well with one clean lap. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time we got past the second pit and into a bunch of the rough stuff, out of my two remaining fans, one of them decided to lose three blades, become unbalanced, and put the blades through the radiator. Uh. And we started overheating almost immediately. Uh, tried to assess the problem. I cut the power to that one fan, tried to run without it. And we only made it about 50 yards before it was overheating again uh, because of the hole in the radiator. Mm. So we decided to call it there and save the motor. That was at about race mile 72. So we made it about 172 miles in this race. That's a lap at three quarter this time. Uh, where we stopped was a good place to stop. Otherwise we would have been holding up traffic or in a remote part of the race course where recovery would have been extremely difficult. So it was a wise choice to call it, unfortunately. I tried to push it 20 more miles. We would have been back in the pits and I had a radiator in the pits that we could have swapped out and kept going. But time frame and all that, you know, it, it is what it is. Yeah. That said, even with all the upgrades to the truck and all the extra power and the bigger tires and all of that, after doing this twice and racing with the unlimited vehicles, which is awesome because we got a lot of publicity, you know, fighting off trophy trucks, uh, I'm not sure that this truck is capable of doing it on the in the allotted time. So that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, I refuse to drop down a class, so we're going to build something new for the Mint in the future. Okay. Uh, something completely new. We're gonna keep it Mopar. It's gonna be Mopar powered. We're working on some, some pretty fancy ideas to do that. Uh, but we're gonna build a, a, a bigger truck uh, to, to go back to the Mint. This truck will see um, Vegas to Reno in 2024, okay. which is a point-to-point -point race. It's about, depending on the route they take, it's between 
450 to 700 miles, depending on which route they decide to use. And, and it will be terrain that is very usable by this truck. So this truck will have a good time doing that race. And I, I fully intend to see the finish in Reno. Uh, so that's the plan. We'll get all the little bugs worked out of it that we figured out. You know, I, I, I think we did very well considering we took a drivetrain with zero miles on it drove it a thousand miles to the race and then raced it yeah. you know with no testing and no tuning and no nothing we just plugged it in and drove it and uh, so that speaks volumes for the mopar crate kit and the way that it's laid out and designed it works you put it in you follow the instructions you wire it up it fired up and ran i drove it around the block i mean that night it was no problem you know, so that was really good. And then this year also, we teamed up with the Burkhart Center I here saw at that. Texas yeah. Tech, and we raised money um, for their uh, Transition Academy. They, it's an autism education and research facility, and they have a place where their students can come in and learn how to live independently and hold down jobs and things of that nature. Me being diagnosed as being autistic about six months ago, this was a really important thing for me to do, to raise money for them, to use my race program for something substantial, uh, as well as showing their students and other people that may you know, ha be autistic or, or other forms of um, you know, m mental complications that you can do these kinds of things. You know, mm -hmm. you're not limited because of something like that and people shouldn't tell you that you are, you know, you're able to do a lot of these things. So we did a pledge drive and people donated per mile that we completed of the race and we ended up all together. Uh, we're still hashing out some of the numbers, but all together with the 172 miles that we completed, we had about $27 a mile donated and a couple other, uh, single donations came in with that we're right at about six or seven grand for for the burkhart so i'm i'm really happy about that yeah. that was that's what makes all of this successful you know it's not always about finishing the whole race but it's about showing people what what we can do showing what what oem products can do out in the real world you know in the hard hard environment they work yeah. it just works you know everything works and and does a good job and and all that and uh, you know that's for me that's what racing is all about is proving what i can do and what the equipment can do and i think i think we did that and i know that you had quite a few friends that came in from far out of town and were helping with the thrash to get everything together we and did. Yep. there's some really neat components that went on to this so uh it's uh, it's great to see you know friends come together and Absolutely. and help out the people that came out to support the truck as far as the pit crew goes and seeing everybody that watched us make the drive you know and them talking about it on the live feed and everything being being a a, a big deal you know for us it was just kind of fun to to do that you know i i realized that it was something that not a lot of people would do but i didn't realize how many people that it might impact you know to see that kind of thing and and uh, to to be impressed by it you know for me i was just driving an old pickup you know and <laughs> it is what it is and to kind of make this full circle we stuck it back on the dyno we made 325 at the wheels uh the shifting was a little wonky it's hard to keep this truck in gear with the eight speed and without having manual control over it which is something i will be making adjustments to in the future uh, so with that it shifted at about 4,000 rpms there's probably another two left in the motor where it would pull more power so i i think we did exactly what what we came to do which was increase the horsepower of the truck by 200 plus and uh and then uh you know get some more speed at out of it and, and make it run around the course a little better and I, I think we did all that. That's awesome, awesome. I, I think I uh, saw a few shots of you getting some really good air off of a, mm. a couple of jumps. So, yeah, well that's great. Thanks, uh, thanks for bringing the truck out and thanks for coming for by. Sure. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, what, what your next design comes out to be as Me far too. as. Me too, I'm, I'm excited about it. Like I said, we're sticking with the Mopar theme. Yeah. Um, we're gonna continue to work with Scog and Dickey. They've been a, an excellent partner in this, uh, very supportive and I really appreciate what they, what they offered. Uh, I look forward to building some bigger and better programs with them and, and bringing them into off-road racing more you know but particularly as a vendor that's part of my goal is to get them to be a supplier for for parts and engines and things like that in the future uh, for some of these classes that need that need that 
and we're going to try to ca campaign some new stuff and uh, put put Mopar back on the map in off-road. It hasn't really been a thing since the 90s. You know, Chevrolet takes over quite a bit with LS motors, and mm -hmm. Ford takes over with bodies and Raptors and things like that. You know, that's yeah. what a lot of the trucks look like. And man, we're, we're Mopar people around here, so that's what we're going to do. Yeah, excellent. Well. Thanks once again, and if you guys uh, make sure to uh, follow, it's it's Tequache Motorsports, Tequache, yep. it's Tequache underscore, underscore Motorsports, Motorsports yeah, on Instagram, excellent, yeah. on Instagram. We'll have the links and everything in, in descriptions, uh, you know, in the videos, so, uh, you know, stay tuned because, you know, the next build's going to be pretty interesting. So thanks for stopping by, and thanks once again, Blake, you appreciate bet. it. You bet. Excellent. We'll see you guys next time.